I get my eyes examined like all the time though. That's good. Mm -hmm. That's good. We're in contact right now. Okay. Now follow my finger only with your eyes. Only with your eyes. Only with your eyes. We are for profit organization. Okay. This is a this is not a non profit organization. Right. So I have to be honest with you. So, so when when uh, you are you are in a business for profit, sales is involved. So you, you sometimes you sell you sell people on the treatment. Of course, you have to sell your treatment because there is so much competition, right? Look at the hospitals. Majority of the hospitals are what for profit. Right. Only the county hospitals are non profit. Right? Right. So And healthcare is fucked up. It's, uh, <laughs> well, 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 you know what I mean? Well, 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 I don't know if it's fucked up, but we, we, if you, you, you know, we are getting care, right? Mm -hmm. If you have insurance, if you have money, you are getting care. Right. All right? If you have insurance, you have money. If you have money, you have insurance, yes, you get care. Are poor, are poor people just straight up fucked? Like if you're if you're poor and impoverished, no, you might be better off. Done? I think rich people are straight up fucked. Really? Well, because rich people buy easier, least. kinder ways. They, they choose the bullshit programs usually, and they the rich people, have, in my opinion, they're looking for special care. This is not about being special. It's about shutting up, sitting down, stop the bullshit, be a person. Nothing special. Let's go. And you get special treatment, you end up not with good outcomes. Michael Jackson got special treatment. Do you think as long as we have private, uh, privatized treatment that's like for profit and making money, that there will always be sort of these carnivorous people out there taking advantage of people in their most desperate? There's always been people like that, so I imagine there always been. It's, it's one of the reasons I'm out of the field right now. I'm so devastated by what's happening. It's too painful. It's too painful. And, and then my patients, you know, work, work, work hard with them and they get sucked into these things that are offering whatever, that are gratifying. Remember, I started by saying things shouldn't be gratifying. Right. Um, same thing's true for the family. It's hard work. It's so hard. It's so painful. That's the only thing worse than being the addict is being the family member. Because really what you have to do is sit by while that person's on the high wire and you know they're about to fall off and you have to just sit by mm -hmm. and pray to God that that doesn't end up in a disaster. She wants to keep him around. No. I brought some pictures of Brandon. Oh, absolutely. Well, we can, uh, we can get you a Brandon. We can get you better one. This is Ted Jakes. His son Brandon was an alcoholic and bulimic who died of complications related to his eating disorder while in treatment. Brandon was first admitted to a rehab center in Arizona called Sober Way Home that guaranteed they could treat his dual diagnosis. After taking the family's money, however, Soberway Home advised that Brandon should be moved to an even pricier treatment facility in California called Morningside Recovery. Looking back on it now, it's, it's like, you know, was this planned, you know, get to get to 30 days here right. and then move somewhere else and then move, you know, move somewhere else. But uh, we felt real comfortable with, with Soberway Home when we were out there, when we went out there. And, and uh, we we trusted them. You know, we've seen the results. We've seen Brandon was you know was doing good there, and um, and we put a lot of faith in in their recommendation. And now you found that there was a financial agreement between Soberway and Morningside. Well, there's something there. You can call it what you want. I think most would call it a kickback. To verify Ted's accusations of a secret kickback, we reached out to Morningside several times. We even made a trip out to their head office to see if they'd be willing to set up a meeting. Yeah, we just, we just, want, we just want to have an interview. Um... But they reneged on the interview and haven't responded to our request since. So we went behind their backs and found someone who would talk. A former employee of Morningside agreed to speak to me under the condition of anonymity due to the litigation involved with their former employer's practices. They told me, quote, they were making referrals back and forth between a sober way and Morningside. You refer a client to Morningside and they pay a 10% fee of what they get paid. This person went on to describe the loose admissions process at Morningside, saying, if you look at what they did to Brandon Jakes, they referred him out at a time when Morningside would just take anybody, even if they were unqualified to treat his condition. Through a deposition, we discovered that First House was also engaged in kickbacks. Here, the owner relates patients like Brandon to dirty laundry. We finally got in to see, to see David Gates. I said, you know, I want to see where Brandon was staying. 
He said, that's impossible because of confidentiality reasons. I said, look, you know, I, I, wanna, I wanna see where he stayed. I said, you know, this poor kid, you know, died 2,000 miles away from home. I said, I wanna, I wanna be a part of that. I never got to talk to him. I wanna, I wanna see that stuff. And uh, then it finally came out that, uh, well, he wasn't there. He was at First House. And I go, what's a place called First yeah, House? Yeah, what, what is First House? And he goes, First House Detox. He said, I said, why is he at First House? And he said that uh, he had patients needing more critical care. We know now that they weren't providing psychological care. They know, we know that they weren't monitoring his, his, his intake or, or his purging. I'm not totally convinced that they were monitoring his potassium, you know, on, that, on the day that he passed away. First House, where Brandon's condition became critical, closed after having at least two other deaths on their watch. First House owners have opened up a new facility called Orange County Recovery Services with virtually the same staff. Morningside lost his license for detox due to numerous regulatory violations, but still runs quasi-legal addiction treatment programs in Southern California. The Jakes reached a settlement with Morningside Recovery for $3.7 million. They are currently pursuing a wrongful death suit against a Silverway home and First House detox. In 2013, drug overdoses killed more than 30,000 people in the U.S. They're responsible for more dead Americans than firearms. Simply put, we're in the midst of an epidemic. And after taking a good hard look at what many Americans see as the best treatment money can buy, it's clear that our best just isn't cutting it. There are many people who work in the high-end rehab world with the best intentions. But as Dr. Muhammad told me inside his swanky addiction center, they don't offer treatment, they sell it. It's not good intentions that fuel this $35 billion industry. It's dollar signs.